let's get into the bugs though. Cause I think this is like, once you get beyond diet, once you get rid of the artificial sweeteners, once you get rid of antibiotics, once you get rid of all the drugs damaging your gut, you know, yep. that we could do a whole hour on medication side effects and diarrhea being a, a side effect of some type of pharmaceutical, but let's focus on the bugs. You mentioned H pylori earlier. This is huge. Can you talk about the mechanism? Why would H pylori set this cascade to end up causing diarrhea? Yeah, I've seen it cause diarrhea and constipation. But number one, it creates inflammation. We know, especially if we have extra virulence factors like VIRD or VACA or uh, OIPA, there's different virulence factors, which are a sign of cytotoxic proteins that are being produced by the H. pylori. It means more inflammation, more chance of gut inflammation, you know, clinically, uh, stomach cancer, those kind of things. But we see lots of people with H. pylori, they're not going to develop into that per se, but we just know with those virulence factors there, there's more inflammation. We know H. pylori will also mess up the digestive cascade. It will decrease stomach acid. It will decrease stomach acid in the gut, making your gut more alkaline, making it harder to break down protein, making it harder to get the acid going to kind of start that domino cascade for good digestion. So without enough stomach acid, it's harder to ionize minerals. It's hard to get our bile uh, being produced and our pancreas being produced because hydrochloric acid and, and acids are that kind of the first domino to get our digestion rolling. So that can make a, a big impact on breaking down fats, ionizing minerals. And then of course, we need minerals to make more hydrochloric acid. We need our sodium, our chloride, our zinc. Uh, we need those minerals to make more acid. So then it's like a vicious cycle because then you don't have the minerals to make the acids and then, then you have less acid as a result. And then you're more stressed and the more your sympathetic nervous system is on fight or flight, the harder it is to produce our digestive juices. So then the problem gets worse and worse over time. That's the issue. Well, let's, and that's all well said. Let's add this on top of the mix too, is when you have the low HCL, now you're not actually going to be killing off the things you're getting exposed to. So let's say you were infection free before. Now you're, uh, sexually active with a partner or even just kissing, sharing cups, sharing spoons. I mean, it's quite easy to pass H. pylori between each other. This is why Justin and I often end up working with the entire family because, you know, the husband may pass it to the wife and the wife shares the cup with the kids or feeds her the spoon and then the kid gets the H. pylori. But now when you get exposed to viruses, you get exposed to bacteria, different parasites, other infections can be piled on. So H. pylori just basically reduced your defensive shield, so to speak. Now your shields are down and these bacteria and parasites that normally would get killed off in a low pH, super acidic environment. Now if the stomach is, let's say, closer to a four in pH, it's headed towards more alkaline. Now all of a sudden these pathogens are like, hey, look at this guy's gut, perfect place to live, not enough acid to kill me. I'm going to stay right here. And then those infections start feeding on the undigested food and the food was undigested because of the H. pylori reducing the digestive fire. So then you see how throwing the infection piece on top of it, you really, really spin out of control. And that's what led to me losing 25 pounds. And uh, it took me a while to recover from that. Exactly. So we kind of have to have like a working philosophy and how to deal with the diarrhea. So we got to look at the food first. We got to look at the nervous system because if we're perceiving lots of stress, that can have a big impact. So we have to you know, eat in a more in an environment that's gonna favor parasympathetic nervous system output. We can meditate before a meal, uh, hypnosis. We can do things to kind of relax our nervous system, EFT tapping. Uh, we can listen to some binaural beats. Things to just kind of relax our nervous system is gonna be really helpful. Of course, taking, you know, following my six R's, taking, getting the bad foods out foods that we're eating, we're going to work on cooking them better. We're going to add in enzymes. We're going to add in acids. If our stools are floating, right, we may add in bile salts to help with the breakdown on the fats. Um, we may, if we have a lot of diarrhea, we may want to give some activated charcoal away from food to kind of slow down the motility and to kind of calm things down. We may want to give some natural ginger or some aloe or some slippery elm or some L-glutamine. Depending on what's happening, how bad things are, we may want to do an elemental diet. We may even want to look at fasting. If food's really driving the issue, fasting may be a beneficial kind of modality. We may now want to add play. in, and one last thing, we may want to add in probiotics sooner instead of maybe that fifth R. We may want to add it sooner and put it in with the third R because probiotics can help with the inflammation and, and kind of calming down the gut. So this is really important because there's a lot of art in here and it's not like a set protocol. So this is where bringing a clinician is very important 
if the low hanging fruit's not really working well. This is where reaching out to myself or Evan may be really important if you're already having a hard time or you're not the typical case.